Hey, in this video, uh, we are going to look at the performance and cost implications of using low code or pro code in Microsoft Fabric, where we will be using uh, Dataflows Gen 2 as our low code option and PySpark Notebook as our pro code option. So let's dive in. Uh, the scenario that we have for this test is quite simple. I have used an open API, which is the OpenBreweriesDatabase.org API. It contains over 8,000 different breweries around the world, and there is a, a REST API that we can use for these kinds of test scenarios, which is uh, quite cool. We can do that free of charge. So thank you for the team over at OpenBreweryDB. And uh, let's dive in. Let's start with the Dataflows Gen 2. All right, so here we are looking at a, a slightly prepared demo of a benchmark of our Dataflow API sample. And what we've done is the following. I have created, uh, together with the help of ChatGPT, because I cannot write uh, mQueries even if it were to save my life. Uh, shout out to uh, my friend Rick de Groot. Uh, he would be able to do this, I will not. So I helped. So I was helped by uh, ChatGPT quite a lot in preparing this demo. But anyway, I created a query that allows me to extract data out of the openbreweryDB.org API, where I will simply be listing breweries and all of their attributes. And what we'll be doing for today is looping through those 8,400 breweries per 20 records each and the reason we do that is uh, even though we can list up to 200 uh, breweries per page uh, i want to force the engine to go through this exercise quite a lot of times so that we can see the implications of having data flows versus uh, a PySpark solution with regards to runtime and costs now what we're doing here is we're uh, connecting to the uh, to the api we're extracting data we're then upping the page number uh, every iteration that we run so we get page one page two page three and uh, and so on with a page size of 20 as long as the uh, count of our data result is larger than zero so if we get an empty result we quit and then uh, from there we will expand those uh, results into a table into columns and so on all right, so let's hit OK in here. We then have to provide credentials, but the credentials here are anonymous, so we don't need to use actually, uh, we don't need to use actual cred uh, credentials. Let's connect, and this will be our table. Now we need to fill in a, a data destination that will be a lake house. We will be creating a new connection. As you can see, I'm not a uh, big expert on data flow so i'm uh, struggling a little bit with how we can actually put our data into a table in a lake house but i can put a default thing in here now let's see if the uh, refresh has been completed let's go here to recent runs and yeah okay here we are so uh, what we've now seen is that the data flow has completed in a little over four minutes uh, four and a half minutes almost and let's see the results in our lake house when in the ah, I forgot to uh, to change the query, or the name of the query. It is now called query. But anyway, this should contain a list of the breweries, and indeed it does. So there is apparently there is quite a lot of breweries in here. This is a preview of the first thousand rows. So I believe that this has worked. Awesome. Let's look at the notebook. All right. So here's the notebook, and now I do speak a bit of PySpark, at least a lot more than I speak mQuery. So <laughs> this was a lot easier for me to write. And basically, we're doing the same thing here. We are using the REST API connection using requests in Python. Uh, my base URL is the same. It's the breweries endpoint of the OpenBreweryDB.org, and I will start at page one, looping through uh, pages uh, by 20 records each. And for uh, for each loop, I will do a while true loop, which is kind of dangerous. You should be able to uh, do this though if you uh, do proper incrementation and then have a break that actually will break, uh, which it does in this case, uh, where every uh, iteration that we go through the loop, I will set the uh, the URL that goes after the base URL. So this should be the specific uh, URL. Uh, I will set that to base URL and then uh, the page number and then the per page. I will execute a get to get request to the endpoint, and I will um, uh, then analyze the response that we get. So uh, we try to parse the response into a JSON document. If that doesn't work, then we will break the loop. If there's no data, then there's nothing to uh, to do, then we will break the loop. Um, if there is data, we will extend the all records list that we have here. We declared an empty list. And if uh, we've done that, but the 
uh, the page size is less than the per page variable that we have defined, the 20 records here, that means that we have reached the final page and we will, we will break the loop. Now at the end we will print the number of records fetched, we will create a Spark data frame using this all records, and then we will save that to, to a delta table in our lake house. So uh, there's nothing on here, let's click run all and see what happens. All right, it looks like the notebook has run. Uh, let's scroll down and we actually ran into an error in here. That is cool. Ah, we did too many requests, no way. Uh, okay, let's check the documentation there. We do not want to be messing around with too many requests. Okay, so in order to uh, fix that uh, issue, we will probably have to wait. So what we can do here is we can uh, import the time uh, library right there and then we can do time dot sleep and let's say we sleep for one second every time we do the iteration and then hopefully we don't get this issue that we are sending too many requests at one uh, at once okay let's try this again and we got into a cloudflare uh, issue okay so <laughs> uh, i guess that the experimentation that we are doing is now failed and apparently cloudflare is uh, blocking us Perhaps because the requests are coming from, not me in the browser, but from uh, Microsoft Fabric, uh, which could be seen as a bot that is spamming this, this API. So I'm not quite sure how to go through with it, other than maybe we should just try and see if we actually got any data to start. Yeah, we did. So we have data from the notebook. Okay, so let's see if we can actually uh, find out if any data has been loaded using the notebook, I think it did. And then maybe we should leave it like this and see what's happening here. Over a thousand records. We should be all right, I think. We should be all right. I mean, this is something I did not expect to happen. Uh, and that's what you get from not preparing properly for a demo, right? But that's maybe the fun of this channel is that we try to do things and see what's going on. All right, performance wise, it feels that the data flow was a little bit slower, however, I cannot prove it. I, I can only prove that after just a couple of seconds, we had 2,400 records uh, from the notebook uh, when it ran into an issue. We extract, uh, extrapolate that by three or four times. I feel like the notebook should have been a bit faster, but we, we have no way to be 100% sure. So this is just a feeling that I have, uh, which would make sense that a code a pro code version would be faster than a low code version, right? So now let's look at how the costs are doing. Let's head over to the uh, metrics app. Okay, we're now here in the metrics app. And before we can analyze the, the metrics, the cost metrics that we've had uh, during the experiments, uh, we actually have to refresh the semantic model because it's not a real time semantic model. So let's click on refresh and then we have to wait for a little bit uh, for the new data to be picked up. And it seems that our uh, semantic model with the uh, capacity metrics has been refreshed. So let's look at the report. All right, so this is the capacity metrics report that Microsoft has uh, given us. I already pre-sampled and pre-selected uh, the stuff that we need. Uh, always make sure that you're looking at the correct capacity. So I am looking at my that fabric guy demo capacity right here. I filtered on the right hand side uh, to today. Today is the we can see all the capacity usage that have been uh, go that has been going on in my capacity today. Uh, let's look in the table below where we have our uh, usage by item where we actually see that we have our benchmark data flow that consumed 3986 uh, capacity unit seconds and our benchmark notebook here consumed only 1109 capacity unit seconds now mind you the uh, the notebook uh, was killed a bit early however i ran it two or three times in order to test out uh, with the delay and so on so i guess that's we should be pretty close to the same runtime that we would have had if we uh, were to just connect to the to the data and extract all of the uh, 8,400 records from the breweries API, which means that we could probably state that the data flows consume maybe two or three times as much capacity unit seconds as notebooks do uh, with, uh, with a regular PySpark code. And that brings us back to the premise of this video and to the conclusion of this video as well, that if you go for low code, yes, maybe you can do things that are easier to do. You don't need a developer or data engineer to do those things for you. However, you will be paying for that privilege by higher compute costs. And in the end, if you do have the capacity, that's fine. If you do not have the capacity, you have to buy a larger capacity. 
uh, which will cost you uh, quite a lot of money. And uh, we see that the time that processes are running maybe gets twice as long, but also the compute power that you're using gets twice as long. So if you are working with a decently sized fabric uh, capacity, maybe you could cu uh, cut your infrastructure costs in half if you move your low-code data flows workloads over to the pro-code PySpark workloads. So that is something to think about and to uh, consider for your organization. Now, if you like this video, subscribe to my channel because every week I will be publishing videos like this one. Uh, also, if you like the video, let me know and let uh, YouTube know by clicking like. If you want to ask a question or just say hi, leave a comment. I will be reading and responding to all the comments myself and I'll see you next time.